more than 300 times as massive as our world. Surrounded by radiation belts millions of times more powerful than any to be found around Earth, and capable of shorting out even the most armored of electronics, spinning at well over 45,000 kilometers per hour. Racked by storms as old as centuries, bigger than our entire planet, with winds that howl at hundreds of kilometers per hour, Jupiter has been described by NASA as a monster. A ringed world, more than a planet, not quite a star. Jupiter is so far from the Sun that it receives only about one thirtieth of the sunlight that Earth does. And yet, due to its size, it manages to reflect so much sunlight that it is one of the brightest objects seen in the nighttime skies of our world. In every way, it would seem that Jupiter predominates our solar system. It is perhaps no wonder that though this world is such a daunting place, a vast behemoth of a planet, surrounded by unfathomably strong radiation belts and enveloped in a massive vortex of gravity, that we humans, ever driven by a need to push boundaries and peer into the unknown, would inevitably come to visit this world again and again and again. And to date, the most recent and most advanced venture has been the Juno probe, the first probe to attain a polar orbit over another world. And Juno, more than any probe that has gone before, was meant to open our eyes to this strange and hostile place in our solar system. The spacecraft that launched the Juno probe left Earth on August 5, 2011, but it is a long way to Jupiter, a journey that took five years and required one pass by Earth two years later to attain a gravity assist, allowing the probe to make its way to the outer solar system. And not since the moon missions has there been such a testament to the ingenuity and determination of humans to discover the story of the stars. Juno looks very different, especially for a probe meant for the outer solar system. Its three enormous solar panels are the largest ever equipped on a planetary probe. Probes destined for the outer solar system are usually equipped with small nuclear reactors because, so far from the sun, there is a lot less light from which to make electricity. But Juno's three large wing-like solar panels also help serve to stabilize it as the probe makes its way around the enormous gravity well that surrounds Jupiter. Juno fell into polar orbit on July 4, 2016. A polar orbit means it orbits the planet vertically, though its orbit is quite elliptical. This allows the Juno probe to make very close passes to Jupiter to carefully study its gravity, magnetosphere, and possible water content. And then the orbit takes Juno far away from Jupiter to the edge of the Jovian system, which gives the probe opportunities to study Jupiter's many and varied moons along with the changing structure of its magnetosphere and its interaction with the radiation belts that surround the planet. Jupiter's magnetosphere is enormous. Earth itself has a very powerful magnetosphere. It protects our atmosphere and keeps us safe from both solar and cosmic radiation. But our magnetosphere is utterly dwarfed in comparison to Jupiter's. The magnetosphere of Jupiter is so immense that it stretches all the way from the Jovian orbit to the orbit of Saturn almost 650 million kilometers away. And the power of the magnetosphere can be translated into sound. This allowed NASA scientists to actually hear when Juno crossed into Jupiter's magnetosphere. This is the sound of the outer parts of Jupiter's magnetosphere. You are about to hear a dramatic change in pitch. That is the bow shock, the exact place where Jupiter's powerful magnetosphere blocks incoming supersonic solar wind. Just there, that is the sound of the solar wind crashing into the outer magnetosphere of another world. Data captured from this event will supply NASA scientists with essential information for understanding the structure and workings not only of Jupiter's magnetosphere, but our own. Because Jupiter is a gas giant, it has no surface. Its magnetic dynamo is only concealed under layers of cloud and liquid, meaning in a sense that its magnetic dynamo is exposed, and careful measurements of the magnetosphere's strength and direction, along with microchanges in Jupiter's gravity, will allow Juno to ferret out its inner workings.
Juno follows a remarkable orbit that takes it within 5,000 kilometers of Jupiter's clouds. That may not sound all that close until you understand just how big a world Jupiter is. At almost 143,000 kilometers in diameter, Jupiter is more than 11 times the diameter of our world. Skimming so low above its clouds at extreme speed leaves very little margin for error, and a wrong maneuver could send Juno toppling and burning into the depths of Jupiter. These orbital passes are amazingly dangerously close, only made possible because Jupiter's immense gravity, 2.4 times that of Earth, can accelerate the probe on approach and then slingshot the probe far out away from the planet each time it makes another pass along the vast length of its elliptical orbit. But this wildly demanding orbital pattern is essential for Juno to complete its mission. It allows the probe to map Juno's magnetosphere, study its gravity, and get a sense of what is going on beneath the clouds with amazing clarity. And the polar orbit allows the probe to cover, in time, the entire breadth of the planet. Juno entered the Jovian orbit in 2016, and her mission is slated to continue until 2025 at which time NASA plans to decommission the probe by slowing her down and allowing her to burn up in the Jovian atmosphere. This event will also provide an immense amount of data for NASA scientists, as the probe will transmit data on Jupiter's environment until the very last and its systems finally give out. But the radiation around Jupiter is punishing. As noted earlier, it is millions of times higher than the radiation to be found around Earth, and though Juno is the most heavily radiation-armored probe that has ever been built, some of her systems are already beginning to show problems. Its cameras and engines have had their quirks along the way, but the trip to Jupiter was demanding. The probe covered some 2.8 billion kilometers over five years, so it's certainly understandable and forgivable if it's starting to show a little wear and tear. After all, Juno has already given us so much and stands to provide years more worth of data about this gigantic planet at the inner portion of the outer solar system, and studies of that vast world, far smaller than a star, but far bigger than an ordinary planet, allow us to develop insights into the workings of planets far beneath the surface. And Juno is not done with its mission yet. Having provided tremendous information on the working of planetary magnetic dynamos, its orbit has been retasked to take a closer look at Jupiter's moons. Thank you for venturing into the cosmos with me in this episode of Sky Story. Sky Story is part of the Understory Network, a collection of programs devoted to the study of the natural world. In MicroStory, we study the invisible world of the very small. In Understory, we examine natural history and issues of conservation. And in Sky Story, we look beyond Earth and explore the cosmos. There will be many more episodes, so to keep abreast, please take a moment to subscribe, and don't forget to hit that like button.